you have come tonight to the most fabulous and celebrated place in the world. Here on the plateau of Gizeh stands forever the mightiest of human achievements. No traveler, emperor, merchant or poet has trodden on these sands and not gasped in awe. The curtain of night is about to rise and disclose the stage on which the drama of a civilization took place. Through the ages, I received many names from the people who came to me in adoration. But the name which has remained with me is that given to me by a Greek traveler, the father of history, Herodotus. He called me Sphinx, as if I were from his land. And that name is now mine. At the foot of such mountains of stone, everything becomes minute and insignificant. Man is an insect. But yet, it was men who built these massive monuments and the names of pharaohs whose tombs they are have crossed the ages. Their glory has defeated time. years ago. Here is the great pyramid which he built to defend himself against death. 455 feet high. He achieved the building of the highest monument then known to man. The area it covers is vast enough to hold St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome, the cathedrals of Florence and Milan, Westminster Abbey and St. Paul's. Three million blocks of stone, some of them weighing 30 tons, were assembled by Cheops' faithful workmen to achieve this fabulous construction. At the center of it, the pharaoh planned his inner chamber, where his mummy was to lie in splendor for eternity. The Pyramid of Kephron. It too bears an inscription, Kephron is great. Yet, out of respect for his father Cheops, Kephron built his pyramid on a slightly smaller scale. The face of Kephron has come down to us sculpted in green diorite streaked with white. A rare stone he brought back from an expedition. Here he is, close to us, in the guise of the Sphinx, carved in rock near his tomb. A third monumental tomb was soon to complete this immense funeral site of Gizeh and make it one of the wonders of the world. Though smaller, the Pyramid of Mykerinos is perhaps the most impressive for being the culminating point of a vast design. Having built it, the workmen climbed down from its granite flanks and laying down their tools, looked up with wonderment. Here, three pharaohs reign, Cheops, Kephron, and Mykerinus. Sarcophagi may be empty, wrappings unwound, yet Cheops, Kephron, and Mykerinus still reign, bearing the double crown of Upper and Lower Egypt. They reign over their court, buried round. Of all ancient monuments, 
It is the pyramids which have always appealed most vividly to man's imagination. Considered from its top downwards, a pyramid is like the sun's rays bursting through a gap in the clouds. It commemorates the greatest victory of all, victory over death. It is the most perfect mansion, the strongest tent, whose great stone sides are both roof and wall, and so carefully sealed that the dream entrusted to it can live to the end of the world. The dream of immortality. To achieve this, embalmers prepared the body for two months, emptying it of all but its heart and kidneys. The movement of these great waters drove the farmers from their inundated fields to the plateau of Gizeh, where they joined the army of laborers and built. These stones were all singly on earth mounds, banked higher and higher as the edifice grew. Who built these monumental houses of the dead? And I. Catherine's faithful companion saw the progress of dynasties and grave priests and the light steps of noble ladies whose diaphanous veils seemed to clothe them, yet not to touch them. Thousands of other suns shall rise again, and man's oldest achievement will remain the highest, the purest. The Nile be praised, for it is the father of all our harvests, all our knowledge, all our architecture, all our strength. The Nile be praised. From its banks came one of the seven wonders of the world. The Nile be praised, for it bears tomorrow's prosperity and happiness. The Nile, river of hope, from Aswan to the Delta. The Nile, which is not a grave, but a cradle. In the course of time, only human achievements crumble and fall. But the spirit which conceived these monuments cannot perish.